Hi, and welcome to Taya Talk. I am David Strickle, creator of the Taya Mindset Practice. Uh, I am uh, indoors today. I'm usually out by the pool on the beautiful, sunny Palm Springs mornings, but today it is pouring rain and very cold outside. I actually love the cold. I love that we're experiencing colder weather. I was looking at pictures the other day from February of last year, and we were wearing shorts. So it's very different weather this year in Palm Springs. Uh, but today is rainy, so I decided to be inside. Um, and I wanted to talk about the subject of detuning transgressors. I know we talk about it a lot, but I can't stress enough uh, the importance in the practice of, first of all, understanding that the detuning work is not something that you start and finish. The detuning work is an ongoing uh, part of the practice. You do it for your whole life. Now, people get into boot camp <clears throat> and we detune uh, root transgressors in boot camp. And that's that's massive work and that's very transformative work. This boot camp are never going to go into boot camp. The detuning part of the Taya practice forgiveness now we call it. The reason that the detuning of transgressors is so very important is because your life's transgressors, meaning any person, circumstance, or event that you cannot look upon in full appreciation, full authentic appreciation, I always say, because we're not about bypassing in this practice, then that is something that is dragging your vibration down. <clears throat> that is something that is causing uh, discord in, in your life. It, it, it is something that when polarity naturally takes your vibration down, that is something that activates triggers for you. Something that, uh, you know, just takes you down your spiral, triggers you down your spiral without any help from polarity at all. All of that stuff, that's all transgressor stuff. And we all have a lot of it because in the matrix, we have been taught to, and when I say the matrix, in case you're new to these teachings, it's the, the, the collective ego of humanity is the matrix. So the belief system that we are all born into, unless you were in an environment where they were teaching you universal law from day one and, and teaching you to ignore the matrix, which is pretty rare. Uh, I don't know that I've met anyone that was indoctrinated into being a human uh, that way. Uh, we were all taught to judge our transgressors and to fear our transgressors. In fact, that early on teaching of fear and judgment of transgressors it is what exactly what creates a lot of childhood trauma. So, and teaches us to start placing obstacles in our path, sometimes massive obstacles early on. So you get into this practice and you, you still can't figure out how a child could attract you know, some, some sort of abuse or something like that early on. Well, that's exactly how, because the soul projects in to have all human experiences without judgment. The ego is, is something that is created at conception and something that, uh, that you carry out throughout your lifetime and you release at the end of your lifetime. But the ego serves as a counter to the source energy, if you will, to separate you from that and deliver the contrasting experience, meaning the, the, there's two sides to everything in our world, and there certainly is. And we need something that comes along and delivers some separation from abundance, i.e. separation from source, so that we have a platform from which to create new things. Because if we are born into perfection and we never want for anything, then we're not really creating anything. We're not experiencing the full human experience. Yes, there are things that we want from our ego perspective, and there's things that we don't want to experience or to have or to be or to do. And the mix of those two things is what delivers the human journey. It delivers a physical journey for all physical creation. But of course, in this case, we're, we're thinking a lot deeper about it than the other beings that we're aware of in our world. So we are going to label it and go deeper into understanding of it. That that duality delivers a human experience, which was never intended to be perfect. It was always intended to be a scenario where we come into this world and there are so many abundant expressions of source available to us 
that we can appreciate and we automatically start discerning preferences toward those things. Things that taste good, things that feel good, things that soothe us, things that make us comfortable, things that make us feel safe. And then there's the counter to all of that stuff. The things that frighten us, the things that harm us, the things that we don't like. Those are those are things that are also preference or preference uh, preferences that we don't want or our preferences to not experience them. So that duality is something that the matrix teaches us to judge that all of that unwanted stuff, you know, all of the stuff over here. And I'll use my wall and window here. This is the dark side. This is the light side. We're taught that there's this dark side and that it's evil and that it's uh, perpetuated perhaps by an evil uh, you know, spirit. And. All of that dark side stuff should be avoided at all costs. We're not supposed to experience. There's something wrong if we do. And we're supposed to judge ourselves and others for experiencing anything on the unwanted side. But then it happens to all of us. And that's where people, a lot of people get out of religions because they don't understand how this loving, expansive, creative God figure, this deity could allow unwanted things to happen. Well, that's a misunderstanding of what that energy is all about because it's been humanized. Because religions, to make it more uh, understandable by the masses, have humanized that we have God who is this good, benevolent being, uh, who, is, who is all love and all, all creation. And then we have the counter to that, which is the devil or Satan or whatever you know a religion's version of that is, something less than or opposite of that. That is the driver of all unwanted creation. But we understand in the Taya practice from the streams teachings that the devil is really metaphorical. The devil is our own ego. The devil is the thing within us that separates us from that abundance, from that God or source energy, however you identify it, and delivers this contrasting experience of positive and negative. And when you start to realize that your negative experiences actually expand you as a being, moving through those negative experiences and coming around to appreciating them detunes them. So, and sometimes we do this naturally. There is a certain degree of this that we do naturally. The matrix is a human creation and the matrix is telling us not to appreciate any of that stuff, to push against it, to fight it, to battle it, to hate it, to label it evil, to claim no responsibility in the creation of it whatsoever. It's all an outside force. It's all some evil person. Uh, you know, so it's toxic people around us that are creating all of this discord in our lives, but really it's us. And the first thing we do when stepping into this practice is, is accept, even if we don't fully understand how, but we accept that we are the creator of our own reality. So if we are the creator of our own reality, we then claim complete control over it. Because when you go back into the things that happened in the past, you start to claim own ownership of it, you move toward appreciation of it, and then suddenly you're starting to get more clarity around how it's served your expansion. So I said that some of this happens naturally, it does, because all of it really happens naturally. But when you get out of the matrix, uh, even because we're not always in the matrix, I, I want to be clear about that. We're, we're, uh, we operate within a matrix, but when our vibration goes up to the top of our spiral, we're really outside, we're operating outside the matrix at, at that point. And when we're outside the matrix, we have these moments of clarity where we understand that, wow, getting fired from that job, losing that uh, business, uh, moving out of that relationship, uh, cutting ties with my uh, friend or sibling or whomever ended up being a very good thing for me. I, I understand now how that was a gift. We all have those things. We all have that clarity that shows up when we're up our spiral. And we have these few things that are transgressors for us that we solve on our own without any practice. But the Taya practice is really about unraveling everything that the matrix has done to us as, as a, a species, if you will. And the unraveling of what the matrix has done in this case means that what if we understand that, you know, I appreciate that losing this led to this other thing that was even bigger and better and opened these new doors for me and turned out to be something magnificent. So therefore I appreciate it. And therefore now it's detuned. It's no longer a transgressor because then you're not looking back at that scenario as something that was evil and it was terrible and it was awful. And it was painful. And it was toxic. All these little labels that we like to slap on things. Instead, you're looking at it like, wow, that was a really good thing that happened for me instead of to me. 
and led to something else. So I appreciate it. Now it's naturally detuned. We take that logic, which to me is quite logical, and we begin applying it to everything. And what we have to do in the Taya practice is understand that the universe is all about putting the cart before the horse, if you will. The universe operates in reverse of the matrix. So the universe is about appreciation first, thought first, thought creates. So if thought creates and you're using your mind to move into appreciation of something, even if you don't yet know how it serves you, will bring you to the clarity of how it serves you. It's very opposite of what the matrix teaches. The matrix teaches us to feel like victims. The matrix teaches us to continually label the, the this should not be label on things, which prolongs our suffering. That judgment of should not be creates 100% of our suffering every single time. And we are taught to put that label on a lot of things, especially a lot of things that we see happening to other people. That child should not be experiencing that. That animal should not be experiencing that. This should not be. I'm judging it. Therefore, I'm suffering in it. And when you start learning to systematically detune that stuff, you start experiencing life very differently. You don't look in judgment at things the way that you used to. You don't suffer uh, observing uh, uh, other people's suffering the way that you used to. You don't suffer observing your obstacles or other people's obstacles the way that you used to because your mindset is completely shifted. You're operating in a different vibration, a higher vibration. So the detuning of transgressors <clears throat> as a system in your life is a lifetime of work. And I do call it work because in the beginning, it takes work. I want anyone that's learning this practice and learning to, to make this habitual to understand that you moved into the matrix automatically. You projected into the matrix and the matrix delivered an expansive experience for you. But now you want to move out of the matrix and operate at a higher vibration as a human being, not in the matrix. And it's completely natural to do that because the matrix was a human creation to begin with. So now you're moving yourself out of the matrix. You're appreciating anything and everything because that is source, which is another pillar of Taya is that that source being within us that's always there that doesn't leave us, doesn't forsake us. We allow our ego to overshadow it. And when we're judging and we're fearing, we're operating at a lower vibration, which is very ego driven. And we're not trying to completely get rid of our ego. In fact, next week's Taya talk is going to be about the value of ego. But right now, I really want to get into the importance of detuning transgressors as a habit, because what happens is, is you'll detune a lot of your major life transgressors and your life will level up. Those people coming out of boot camp that give those glowing testimonials, that's the work they've done. They've really leveled their lives up because they have started uh, detuning their root transgressors and a lot of the branches that came along with that, the big stuff in their lives. And when we graduate them from boot camp, they then leave understanding how to do it. It's up to them to continue doing it. And yes, it will take work because the work is you're moving through vibrational flow. When you're up, you feel great. You're hopeful. You're dreaming. You're believing. You're receiving more of the things that you want. And once you've detuned a lot of your root transgressors, that starts to happen for you. But you're going to be dragged back down in a lower vibration. Some old habits are going to come back around. That vibrational dust is going to reveal itself. And what it does, you have two choices. You can say, well, gosh, all of that work I did in boot camp was a waste of time, or all of this Taya stuff doesn't really work because I'm still working on these things. Well, that is a form of self-sabotage that actually keeps the matrix alive and very healthy because it's so easy to write something off because we want this quick fix for everything in our world. Everything is supposed to be this quick fix, but we're talking in Taya about detuning and shifting a lifetime of created belief system. So you started creating your belief system from conception, really, and certainly after birth. And a lot of your belief system was created in early childhood. And you've moved through life, adding on to and expanding that belief system. And now you're choosing to shift into a whole different belief system than 99.99% of humanity is operating in. And it's not supported in, in mainstream culture, certainly. But here you are choosing to do this 
because you see the results that it delivers for people. This is something unlike anything else that I'm aware of on our planet. And here we are, those of us that are deep into the practice, authentically appreciating all that is, not 100% of the time, but more and more and more. And we realize how different life is. And certainly there are people that have done some work in spirituality that believe they have moved themselves from 3D to 5D or to the fifth dimension. This Again, this human created notion that there's this other dimension waiting for us that is a higher vibration. Well, that other dimension is a state of consciousness. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, it does. But you move there by shifting your consciousness. And Taya gives you the tools to shift your consciousness. We shift our consciousness by being more source aligned, less in our ego. We shift our consciousness by understanding vibrational flow. And sometimes, you know, we're up and sometimes we're down and what we should be doing in those different um, points on our vibrational spiral. We shift our consciousness by clearing out the stuff that drags our vibration down and detuning of transgressors, releasing of transgressors, which is the same thing. That is releasing a lot of the energy that drags our vibration down. Those thoughts that live in our mind that are negative, unwanted things that we get triggered by, that we revisit when we're down our spiral, that are weighting us down all the time, those old judgments, those old fears, those old comparisons, all of that stuff, all of it is dragging our vibration down. And when we start clearing that, our vibration just naturally goes up. We find ourselves in a high vibrational register more and more and more. So that's why we continually detune transgressors. And for a while, when you're new to Taya, it's a good thing to go hunting for your transgressors. I don't necessarily recommend this heavy duty detuning of roots outside of boot camp because in there you've got support and coaching and tools and all sorts of things to go in and do that work. But once you've done that work, you can then go about detuning things as they pop up. You don't have to go hunting for transgressors after a while. They will reveal themselves to you naturally in your state of lower vibration, which vibrational flow is always going to produce for you. So you're always going to go down your spiral on occasion. And you're all, when you're down there, you're going to recognize what your transgressors are, who they are, what's lurking in my vibrational basement. When I go down my spiral, this pops up for me. I have this judgment. I have this fear. This still makes me angry. This, this triggers me. Well, the root of all of those things, whatever that is, whatever the origin of that is, all of that is transgressor energy. And you can discover what all of it is. Just don't start hammering. We know that hammering creates the opposite effect of what we're desiring because we're creating the vibration of need. So if you start trying to detune transgressors in the vibration of, I need to get rid of this, I, I've got to get rid of this transgressor, I can't have this around, well, you're feeding it, you're giving it more power, and that transgressor is indeed going to stick around for you. So it's more about appreciation of, I appreciate what you did for me, thank you and goodbye. Think of it like that. I appreciate how this served me. Even if I don't know how it served me yet, I know it served me on some level or I wouldn't have created it for myself. Thank you and goodbye. It's as easy as that. Put the cart before the horse. Find appreciation for it before you know how or why you created it. And the how and why will show up in your higher vibration of appreciation. That's the magic of detuning transgressors. That's why it is the first pillar of the four pillars of Taya. That appreciation piece. We used to call it forgiveness, but we came to understand that it's way more than forgiveness. It's a totally different vibration than forgiveness. Forgiveness is you did something bad to me and I'm going to let you off the hook and try to get over it. We are going past that to past acceptance all the way to full-blown radical appreciation. And I call it radical because within the matrix, it's radical to appreciate your transgressors. Outside of the matrix, up your spiral in high vibration, it's not radical at all. It's source. It's a natural state of being to appreciate all that is. That's why source is nothing but abundant and nothing but expansive energy. And all of our abundance comes from source, that source version of us that loves and appreciates all that is without judgment. That's why we detune transgressors. Thank you so much for watching.